I'll give you credit for being the father of self-driving cars, um, which we, we, you built yeah, the first yeah, one. Um, now you're working on flying cars, and it seems there's an investment frenzy with companies as big as Airbus and Boeing um, trying to get into this. What will be Kitty Hawk's advantage to be first to bring this idea to the masses? Well, Emily, before thanks for anyone having else. me. Uh, first of all, these are not cars, they have no wheels, they just fly. So, but should we call them something else? Call them whatever you want. <laughs> but imagine you could have this magic wand that lifts you like three, four hundred feet in the air above the tree lines. What would you do? And, and sure enough, if I want to go from, say, San Francisco to Berkeley or from Jersey City to New York, I go in a straight line through the air without any obstacles. So, what do you call them? Uh, we call them E VTOL devices, E for electric and V for vertical takeoff and landing. So, look, you know, Uber's working on these uh, in a joint venture with Airbus. What makes Kitty Hawk's design approach unique? We've been on it for about eight years. We've done many, many thousands of successful flights. Right now, we may do about two or three hundred flights a week. And I think we're all in early stages. We are still developing the basic technology and we are working towards our way to practical um, deployments. So when do you see this being as affordable and accessible as an individual car? I think eventually it'll be cheaper than cars. And the reason is the vehicles themselves will be cheaper than cars. They're much lighter. But also the amount of energy you need. For example, you could fly on one cent of energy from Jersey City to Times Square, Manhattan. Uh, that'll be so much less expensive than a car that I, I foresee a future, a distant future, trust me. Uh, you know, you're smiling. Um, <laughs> years ago, when you took the very first ride in the Google self I had the same smile, right? It's like, oh my God, crazy idea. No one's going to take it seriously, but let's talk to this guy. He might be slightly crazy. <laughs> I think the same thing happens right now. Today, self-driving car is the biggest thing since sliced bread. Everybody talks about it, from politicians to, to, to big company CEOs. And no one yet takes flight as a serious alternative to urban transportation. I promise, that will change. So, but when do regulators and governments catch up? I mean, safety is a concern here. Safety is a huge concern. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, in the end of the day, it's going to be safer than cars because there's almost nothing to hit 400 feet up in the air. But we have to work right there. So we're working at Kitty Hawk very closely with New Zealand, where we have a path to get vehicles uh, deployed as an air taxi service, possibly as the first ever air vehicle without a pilot inside uh, for passengers. And we're working every day in Las Vegas, where we fly legally, totally legally, uh, a mock air taxi service uh, near Las Vegas. Larry Page is one of your factors. How involved is he? Does he visit? Do you talk often? What is his level of... I can tell you, Larry, apart from being a close friend, has incredible technology wisdom. If we think of who is the Thomas Edison of our time, I would say it's, it's Larry Page. Um, so a lot of what we do is, uh, is based on his insight of, of looking to the future. The same was true for the self-driving car. He was the person who brought the self-driving car into Google, firmly believing it'd be a great, great business opportunity. So what's an example of some feedback he's given you? Uh, we talk about issues like noise, uh, should a vehicle have a wing or not, uh, about physics. Uh, we talk about how to go to market, um, we had to deploy it first. Uh, a lot of like things that happen in daily life as a CEO. He's a fantastic board member and partner. Some ask, shouldn't you know all of these bright minds be working on fixing our bus systems and other broken transport systems that already exist? Yeah, so you could, you could look at this, but I, I would say that, for example, in California, we have this thing on the, on the, on the road map to build a new high speed, uh, speed train track from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Um, I would say that type of technology is 20th century technology, but we should really invent is 21st century technology. So, for example, bus systems. Buses are great because you can amortize the cost of a driver over many, many, many passengers. But the moment you enter a driverless car era, there's really no benefit to putting many, many people in the same vehicle. If you put many vehicles into one vessel, then you have the last mile problem and you have the time coordination problem, which doesn't exist if every person gets his own vehicle. Waymo, uh, Google self-driving car unit, which used to be part of Google X, which you used to run, uh, sounds like they say the self-driving car technology will be ready for prime time next year. Is it really? I, I'm super excited. I can tell you I'm, I'm, I'm impatient. And when I, back in the day, ran the Google self-driving car team, I thought we were like this close. And I hope we're going to see this technology very soon. And the reason is we lose in this country over 30,000 people in traffic accidents every year worldwide. Over a million people die because of inattentive drivers effectively, so I can't wait. But could we still feel like we're this close, but really be so far? I mean, there's concern about AI ha having hit a wall. I think, I think AI has not hit a wall. 
uh, I can tell you next year whether we're close or not. But I'm actually very optimistic. I've seen the progress. In self-driving cars, one of the nice things is um, when in, in driving, you and I make a mistake. We, we learn from it, and we're going to avoid this mistake, but no one else basically does. But in, in self-driving cars, if a self-driving car makes some mistakes, all the other cars learn at the same time, including all the unborn future self-driving cars. So as a result, the, the reliability goes up and up and up. And Google has not driven, or Waymo driven more than 8 million miles, which is incredibly remarkable, with one really minor fender banner. Alphabet's facing a lot of privacy trust concerns. Do you think they'll figure that out? Do you think this backlash against tech lasts? I would say we, in the tech industry, we care about people. We see tech as a tool. So my company, Udacity, for example, teaches millions of people around the world. We just started an initiative in the Middle East where we teach one million Arab people how to code. And that's our way to give back. We really want to take everybody along. We really care deeply. And we put our time and effort into building technology that empowers the entire world.